I'm Stephanie Filardi. Welcome to Mind the Gap, the podcast. I believe many people fall short of living the life of their dreams simply because they get stuck in what I call the gap. The vision behind this podcast is to help you understand how to navigate the gap and in the process, awaken to the life that is waiting for you. It starts now. Let's go. Welcome to the show. Before we get started, I'd like us to take a few conscious breaths together. So wherever you are, even if you're driving, take a moment to inhale through your nose. And when you exhale, exhale out of your mouth with a ha. <sighs> Try to keep your eyes open if you're driving. <laughs> and let's do two more like that. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go out of your mouth. <sighs> and then one more time in through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth and let it go. <sighs> So noticing what happens when you consciously take three breaths. We slow down the heart rate, we slow down the mind rate, and we naturally become more present. I am excited to welcome Elizabeth to the show today. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Thanks. So today we'll be talking about transitions. I define transitions as times in our life when things change. And for some of you, perhaps you've had transitions in relationships. So maybe the ending of one relationship, the beginning of another. It's a big topic, one of my favorites actually. And it could be anything from a romantic relationship to a friendship, to a relationship with a pet. So this is a very broad category, it's one example. Another area where we experience transitions or change is with our work, our career, our vocation. Some of us are changing careers, completely different field. Some of us are coming into our careers or maybe ending our career, maybe we're retiring. Sometimes it's by choice and sometimes it's not. So that's another area of life that at some point we all experience as a transition. The next area is the area of health. So that could be anything from a change in our health status to just noticing what happens as our body ages over time. And then other transitions are in the environments we're in. So it could be a move of some sort, again, whether we want it or we're required to do it for a job or for a family. So the point is that we recognize that in life, part of life, is about navigating those transitions, navigating those points of change. And in my experience, talking with people and in my own life, when we are in those places of transition of change, it can cause stress. Human nature typically doesn't like the unknown, <laughs> does not like change, and is uncomfortable with uncertainty. They, we want certainty, we wanna know, we wanna be in control. So at times when we experience these transitions and we face the unknown, we face these emotions, it can be challenging for us and we can get stuck, right? In what I call the gap. So today I have Elizabeth joining us and I wanna hear a little bit from you, Elizabeth, about a transition in your life that you experienced and tell us what happened. Um, what, what was the transition and what was your experience? Well, first I identify with every single transition that you just said um, in my short life on this planet. Um, I guess for me, um, I'm going to talk about my job transition. I started in culinary arts and then transitioned into uh, the wellness business, which is not too far from each other, but just a completely different entity. Um, so yeah, that was a transition for me. 
And what was that like? What was the experience? Was it comfortable? Was it because it doesn't always have to be uncomfortable, right? It could be blissful. It could be amazing. I, so tell us about your experience of it emotionally. Um, I see transition as like exciting um, because a lot of times it's something you know is going on, but you don't at the same time, if that even makes sense. So tell me a little bit more about your experience of the transition from culinary, you know, culinary arts background mm -hmm. to the wellness field. What was that like? Was it easy? Was it hard? What was your emotional experience of that? I would say it was both challenging, but rewarding at the same time, even though I didn't realize it. Um, I was able to take away relationships from it Navigating the water sometimes is a little bit difficult, um, but in the end you realize that it's just part of your journey and it's really exciting and you, you do take some things from it and bring it into your next journey. So it's it's great. It's really exciting, the unknown and what's going to happen next. And So it sounds like you're the type of person who likes the unknown. I do. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, not all the time. But. It sounds like it was an opportunity for you to perhaps grow and learn a little bit more about yourself and making that transition. Is that correct? From the culinary world to the wellness field? Yeah, I realized for me it was I was trying in culinary to please multiple people at one time. And I really wanted to individualize it and just focus on one person and their needs rather than for the masses so and and sort of give individual attention rather than do that for multiple people mm -hmm. so it was for me the same field but just a little more intimate so more aligned with who you are yes. and what you were looking to do yeah. giving more of that individual attention yes a customized transition if you will mm -hmm. fabulous so um, I'd love to know um, has there been an experience in your life where there's been a transition that was not so pleasant or not so easy? Something that maybe happened um, without your choice, making it sounds like you made the choice to go from culinary to wellness, like it wasn't forced, it was like your own choice. Um, well, not or really, no. to oh. be honest. Oh, tell me about of, that. Sort of the universe uh -huh. kind of doing it for me, which the universe does to me all the time. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't, pursue culinary I kind of got caught up in other things and distractions but it led me into my current endeavor which is you know the wellness business which I love so looking back I was able to realize that it was a, a beautiful mistake uh, well said mm -hmm. so it was something that happened a change that happened without you necessarily asking for it at least at the time realizing that and then it sounds like it actually put you in the place where you belonged yes. in some ways that was more aligned. Absolutely. Wonderful. So do you have any wisdom to give other people who are maybe experiencing in the world of work a transition, whether it's maybe they're questioning their field of work, they're, they feel like they're not totally aligned or navigating that experience, would you give them any wisdom or advice on how, to, how it could be easier or anything that, you know, a few things maybe you learned looking back? I would say simple but easy, like trust the process, take one day at a time and just, you know, ask the universe what you want and they will make it an easy transition for you. Thank you. Yes. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank okay. you so much. It was a pleasure having you, Elizabeth. Thank you. We've been talking about transitions, those times in our life where we have change. Sometimes the change is by our own choice and sometimes it's not. And to give a few examples of those transitions, they could be change in our work situation, our home situation, our relationship situation. And oftentimes when we go through these transitions, many of us, when we face the unknown and uncertainty, may feel stressed or confused or afraid. And there are some of us that actually enjoy it. Um, so today we're talking with David, who's joining us and speaking a little bit about Welcome, David. A Thank little you bit for about you're welcome. Thanks for coming. A little bit about a transition in your life that you experienced. Well, um, you're when you talk about transitions, you talk about job. You can talk about movement, moving physically. You could talk about divorce. So over the last five years, I've experienced um, pretty much all three. <laughs> so I'm a perfect guest for your podcast today. <laughs> Great. <laughs> So do you want to tell me a little bit more about one of those or, or you can speak in general about them, what you experienced, what it was like, how you handled it, or if there's one in particular? I think the, the one that um, the most recent would be a job transition um, from 
uh, corporate world into uh, quick service and then back into the corporate world over the last three and a half years. And what was that like for you? Was it was it a transition or a change that happened because you wanted it to happen? Or was it, tell us a little bit more about yes. the, ex- the emotional experience of that and... So going from uh, corporate into uh, quick service uh, restaurant business was by choice. It was something that I've wanted to do since I was a young uh, lad, <laughs> I guess you could say, and it was a good experience. Um, but definitely long to get back into a training and education in uh, in the corporate world. So that's what I what I decided to go back into doing it. Nice. So you were able to take a chance in a field that you always wanted to explore. Yes. And you did that. Yes. And it sounds like in doing that, you realized, okay, check the box on that, and I want to go back to what Correct. you had done. Correct. So during that time, was it challenging at any points when you made the initial change from the corporate world? to the quick service or from the quick service back to the corporate maybe tell us a little bit about what you experienced um during those times oh yeah so so the the going from corporate to quick service uh restaurant business is is definitely a uh, different i guess fundamental skill set um that i wasn't used to uh utilizing i guess but i naturally had it um you know providing service for for people and, and food, etc., was very gratifying. Um, so fundamentally, with training and education and quick service, you're fun, you're you're helping people in some way, shape, or form. But um, yeah, so that was uh, an interesting uh, transition for sure. Um, but getting back into the corporate world, I realized that one of the tough things was to kind of get your mind around getting back into that more structured type of environment. Mm. And, um, you know, dealing with multiple people when you run your own business, it's you and maybe a partner. Whereas when you get back into the corporate world, you're dealing with different dynamics and different personalities again. So getting back into that mindset and being able to, to, to uh, manage that again was a, was a little bit uh, more challenging than I had thought. So were there any things that you learned throughout that process, whether it was from initially going from corporate to having your own business and then back into corporate was there any like major lessons that either you learned about yourself or other people that was helpful for you and worth it worthwhile so to speak yeah i would say the biggest thing was um if if you believe in what you're doing and you have a passion about it i think you can you can accomplish anything um it it really doesn't matter if you were trained in it and or had a proper education behind it I think if if someone really wants to do something, they absolutely can do it and and manage that transition. I would say it's staying positive, staying motivated, and knowing at the end of the day, you're doing something that you love when you wake up in the morning. And I think those are the things that um, if if anybody that's listening believes in what they're doing, they can can absolutely do that transition and, and I guess you can say mind the gap properly. Great wisdom. So were you at any point in time concerned about your ability to get back into the corporate world once you kind of noticed or realized that working for yourself perhaps wasn't the ideal? Were there any moments when you said, wow, is this going to be hard? Or was there any fear or doubt um, about making that leap kind of back in, which some people are concerned about? Yes, I would say the biggest fear was uh, when you're out of corporate, you know, how technology changes pretty every six months almost so I was out of it for almost two and a half years and getting back into uh, the corporate world you are obviously required to utilize technology and make that a part of your not only your your fundamental position but also be able to utilize it to um, uh, with your customers etc so getting getting into that and relearning that part of the business was a little bit of a fear for me, um, and in the beginning, it was very difficult. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. It was uh, getting back into that was was part of the one of the tougher part parts of it. Um, communicating and dealing with people and and building relationships and collaborative efforts on on projects. That's not what I was fearing. It was more of um, of utilizing the you know the technology that is out there today to complement what I was trying to do. So would you have any words of other, you know, words of advice or wisdom for someone who is perhaps contemplating a change in career, whether it's going from 
um, a corporate situation to owning your own business, or some people go from owning their own business to wanting to work for a corporation. Do mm-hmm. you have any just kind of general about that, the transition, the mindset, the things that helped you kind of navigate maybe some of the, the days that were more challenging? Any wisdom for somebody? I think what I uh, said earlier really rings true to that question as well. Um, you, you just really have to believe in what you're doing and you wake up in the morning whether it be 3 30 in the morning or traditional 6 30 in the morning as long as you believe in what you're doing and you have a plan and a process in place every day to reach a goal that you've set i think you can do it um going from quick service to corporate and back it's a drastic different in the mentality and the mindset as far as um skills and and what you really need to do on a daily basis, but you know, if you're not worried um, and believe in yourself, and you have good people around you that support you, family, friends, um, I, I think it's uh, it's something you can do again if you believe in what you're doing. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today uh, as we talked about transitions, and we were able to speak with. Elizabeth and David, and they shared their experience of work transitions. So I feel like to recap, the what I heard was that both of them were able to navigate the transitions because they believed in themselves, because they trusted the process, and because they were willing to receive what was being given to them. So if that's inspiring to you, which I hope it is, perhaps either for yourself or someone you know, It's important to remember that when we are in those moments of transition, that the people that we surround ourselves with, having positive influences in our life is extremely important. So make sure you surround yourself with people and it could be only a handful of people. You don't need to have five. If you have one or two, as you navigate these transitions, it will be beneficial to you and your well-being. Next week, We'll be talking about transitions as it relates to relationships, one of my favorite topics. So if you're someone who has an experience in relationship transition or any other transition that you feel would be helpful to share, I invite you to send me an email at stephanie at bronxvillewellness.com. That's stephanie at bronxvillewellness.com, S T E P H A. N-I-E at Bronxville, B-R-O-N-X-V-I-L-L-E, wellness.com. Let's go, go, go. go.